Today's phones are extraordinary. This device has more power than the computer that put a man on the moon, and yet it fits in your pocket. It shows where we are. It tracks our fitness. We can take high-resolution photos and videos and send them anywhere to anyone. We can listen to high-quality music. We can play games. We can access data from around the world. And we can perform an infinite number of different tasks with millions of apps available on an app store. But people are extraordinary, too. We have hands and fingers. We can write. We can draw. We can manipulate objects and tools. And we take advantage of our talent and our interests to develop expertise over time. We also innovate and we create new things and we express ourselves in all kinds of different ways. So given the extraordinary capabilities of both, why is the interaction between them so limited? We have a lovely glass surface, but all it lets us do is tap, swipe, or pinch. For the simplest task, we still have to navigate through a series of icons and buttons. We're limited to what the apps have to offer us already. We can't program them, we can't create new things unless we go to a separate computer. Smartphones are ubiquitous, we use them constantly. So why is it that in terms of interaction, we're all still novices? It's as if we spend every day playing the piano and we never learn to master it. So we all know that smartphones are really computers. But the interface was designed so that everyone can use it. That's why we have buttons, because they're easy to learn. But there's nothing to master. That limits our potential and reduces our power of expression. What would it take for ordinary people to harness the full power of this computer? Well, they can use gestures. One possibility is to draw lines that represent a potentially infinite number of commands. These commands can be expressive but also precise. We can draw them without looking, and we can combine them in different ways to create complex and interesting commands. So why don't we use the language of gestures to interact with our phones? Instead of searching for an icon or scrolling through a menu, why not just draw it? So the easy answer is we would have to learn the gestures and the commands. To move from being a novice to being an expert, or even just to be an intermediate, the gesture commands must be easily discoverable. So our goal is to make the system incrementally learnable. We want novices to be able to perform slowly and see a dynamic guide that reveals what the system just did and learn what they can do next. But experts should be able to just do it. We have progressive feed forward that gives all the benefits of a novice button style interface, but everybody can learn to become an expert. So the second challenge is how do we make these appropriate? How do we adapt and modify them to meet our own personal needs? How can we define our own gestures and map them to our favorite commands? How can we create our own custom environments and share them with our friends? Gestures that end in a red zone already exist. Either continue drawing or try again. Gestures that end in a blue zone are unique and easy for the system to recognize. So our third challenge is how do we support expressivity? How do we preserve and communicate our own individuality. We would like to be able to capture personal variation through our gestures that reveal something of ourselves, not just emojis, but something under our control. You and I, when we write the word hello, it looks different. But if we type hello, it's exactly the same. But if we use gesture typing, which is a system where we draw through the letters to create a word, the system can not only try to figure out what is the word that we meant, but take the variation that we create in that word and reveal that as an expressive output, a change in color, a change in font, perhaps a change in expression in an emoji. We get all the benefits of the text recognition, but we have dynamic control over it to create expressive output. So our goal really is to take this extraordinary device and give it an extraordinary interface, one that lets users do what they really want to do with it, to give them a real power of expression. We, of course, need to make it discoverable so that people can learn how to use it over time, and we need to make it appropriable so that they can modify it and change it the way they want. And we want to make it expressive so that it reveals their personalities. 
In fact, what we're really looking for is to create some kind of human-computer partnership where the system does things for us when that's appropriate, but also lets us interact with it in a way to create something new that only we could do together with this machine. So we want to create new kinds of human-computer partnerships that actively empower users and allow us to do things that we never could do before.